Computers aren't very good at picking random numbers. Every part of a computer is designed to be predictable and follow logical patterns. You put the same numbers in, you're going to get the same numbers out, which is a problem because all modern encryption, including that padlock up in your browser that tells you that you're safe, all of that relies on big, properly random numbers. If you can somehow predict those numbers, you can start breaking those locks, which is why I'm here at the headquarters of Cloudflare in San Francisco. Cloudflare is a service that protects websites and web services and sort of sits in front of them as a gatekeeper. Somewhere around 10% of the web flows through Cloudflare's network. Cloudflare was one of the first companies to provide free SSL encryption for websites. So the connection between your web browser and the website you're going to is fully encrypted and you know, invisible for eavesdroppers to be able to look at. In short, these folks deal with a lot of encrypted internet traffic, so they need a lot of random numbers. It is possible to write code that will simulate randomness, and that's good enough for a lot of uses, but in theory, those numbers could be predicted. They're just being generated by code. So the servers here have to get their randomness from an external and entirely unpredictable source. A lot of home computers treat their own users as sources of randomness. Tiny twitches of mouse movements, the exact milliseconds between keystrokes, or on a phone, maybe even the accelerometer or other sensors. In all those cases, they generally discard the bigger parts, the bits that could just be influenced by humans, and go off to tiny little decimal places, the bits that you couldn't control precisely even if you wanted to. But that sort of human interaction is nowhere near enough for an operation on this scale, hence lava lamps. We videotape these lava lamps and take the pictures and the video and turn it into a stream of random unpredictable bytes. And this unpredictable data is what we use to help create the keys that encrypt the traffic that, that flow through Cloudflare's network. This data is then fed into our data centers and then fed into the Linux kernel, which then uses it to help uh, seed random number generators that are used to generate keys. Every time that you take a picture with a camera, there's going to be some sort of static, some sort of noise. So it's not only just where the bubbles are flowing through the lava lamp, it's sort of the, uh, the state of the air, the sort of ambient light, every tiny change uh, impacts the stream of data. A cryptographic hash function is something that we use where it, even if you have the one sort of static image and one little, one little bit changes, it changes the entire cha stream. So uh, we use that to, to help scatter the randomness as much as possible. We also collect randomness around the world. So in our London office, we have this thing called a chaotic pendulum. It has three pieces and it's unpredictable in which way they kind of twist and turn together. We videotape that and feed it into our randomness source as well. In our Singapore office, we have a radioactive source that we use to feed into the randomness system as well. So this is not just some stunt that we, that we pulled. It's, it's actually you know, being fed into our real systems. Whether anything in the world is truly random is arguably a question of philosophy and not science. Maybe everything is just complicated clockwork, but these lava lamps are so chaotic that simulating that camera shot with perfect pixel accuracy, far enough ahead to be useful, while figuring out everything else those images are being put through, it's roughly the same level of difficulty as just brute forcing the encryption in the first place. And even if you could simulate all that, you'd only have one piece of the puzzle. These folks aren't the first to do this. Lava Rand was patented by a company called Silicon Graphics in 1996, but that only lasted a couple of years. Now, of course, there are less flashy and more practical ways to generate random numbers, but then I wouldn't be here. I would be at some other company who'd gone and, I don't know, pointed a camera at a basket of kittens. That'd be a bit higher maintenance, though.